Here with Washington State women's basketball head coach Cami Etheridge. Coach, your team just received a bid into the NCAA tournament. You earned a nine seed. You'll be playing eight seed South Florida on Sunday. Just what are your thoughts and reaction to the new, to the uh, to the news? Yeah, it's hard to process past just getting in and the excitement of that, and and just what a great moment to celebrate with our team. To um, to know a lot of people are watching, a lot of Coug fans out there that are watching and are really proud and excited for this program and and for this university. Again, I just love the story behind it, the fact that we've only been to one in our entire history, and and that one was 30 years ago. So I uh, told the team just how much it's just a, it's a neat story. We want to become relevant in women's basketball. We want to become uh, a household name for uh, women's basketball and a top program in the country. And and this was the first step to get into the NCAA tournament, to make some waves, and to have a chance to to play a great South Florida team. We'll open the floor here to questions. We'll start off with Jamie Vinnick. Go ahead, Jamie. Hey, Coach. Uh, first off, congratulations on making it to the tournament. Uh, what does it kind of mean to you to be just the second coach uh, in program history to make the tournament and to break this 30-year drought of, uh, of not being in the dance? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm really – I'm really just blown away by that. Um, again, I, I think if I were to think back on coming and, you know, you know, it's not a great tradition, but I, I think once you're here and you just know how hard we struggled those first two years, and then you get to know the PAC 12 and how good it's become over the years that, you know, you, you wonder if you got yourself into something that you couldn't, you couldn't get out of. And, and is there a reason why the tradition was like that? But, you know, that's just not us and as people and as coaches and as a staff and and ultimately you know how we built our culture and the kinds of players and, and character kids and and competitors that we brought into this program you know that's still the beauty of women's basketball is that you can make a dent into uh the top 25 or you can you can create a, a great winning environment and um this is the first step to that this is us getting in uh, but I'm I'm anxious for that. I'm excited for that. I want us to do well. But I think this is just a a, a building block. You know, we're we're going up from here, and we're going to create a a great environment here. And it's going to be a we're going to change this tradition. The tradition is going to become a, a a relevant women's basketball program. Well, you know, by the time the the Pac-12 season had concluded, you had been playing teams kind of for the second or third time to a point where you have some familiarity with them. How much different is the preparation for a team like South Florida, who you guys haven't played yet, and just don't have that kind of uh, that kind of familiarity with. Yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting um, uh, scout, and I think the the thing that you just want to hold on to and believe and and trust is that you, especially at this level, that you have played people in in the Pac-12 that uh, are similar to that style of play or how they play, and uh, I know they are just unbelievably great on the defensive end, um, just just tough physical uh, athletes that, that, you know, they're going to guard us. They're really going to guard us. So you start thinking about that and we've really played some teams, you know, obviously Arizona kind of took it to us this last time. So, you know, you just got to trust that. And I really have loved the fact that we've had seven days or 10 days since our last game where we've kind of, you know, tried to reinvent some things and help ourselves on the offensive end, especially knowing that we're probably going to see some zone and, and see some real pressure man since we didn't handle it very well. So, you know, we got to trust who we are. We got to, we got to put ourselves in a good position and, and um, you know, we also have to make it hard for the other team. So it goes a little bit both ways. I'm excited that this team gets a chance to, to see what we're up against and, and if we can compete. John Blanchett with the spokesman review. Go ahead, John. Cammy, I wonder if I could go back to your statement about uh, looking at the situation and, and maybe wondering if there was a reason the tradition was like what it was. Did you go heavily into that or did you just decide to just kind of shuck it and say, forget that and, and move forward with the, with what you were going to do? No, I, I don't think I went too heavily into it. I think thinking back, I, I you know, you might have gone, you know, if you want comfort, I could have stayed where I was for a long time. This wasn't a, you know, a comfort move. This was a, you know, step into the big leagues and, and compete against the best, you know, some of the best coaches and obviously the best talent and, and, and athletes that you can go against in women's basketball. So, um, but I, I believed in who we were as coaches and how we recruit and, and how we build our foundation on just character traits and, and the things that'll last. And if we got that foundation, even while we were losing, I thought we were building that. I thought we were establishing 
you know, just a toughness and a competitive environment and, and a, a group of players that would respect what it means to be a Coug, what it res- respect, what it means to, to be a great basketball player, how hard you have to work at it to be great. You know, some of those things that we really build our program on. So we lived in that world for two years and didn't see any results on the, on the scoreboard as much, but uh, it kicked in and it was, it was being established even in those first two years. So I think when we added a little bit more talent and, and the depth of our team got a little bit better, all of a sudden, you know, you saw the results of just, you know, I think a really rock solid foundation and uh, something that not only will, will transcend this year and, and gets us to this point, but really it's going to, I hope a jumping off point. I think we can really go forward from here to, to build this into a top 25, top 20 program in the country every year. Is it, is it particularly difficult or at all to convince young women um, that they can make history like this and, and uh, when there hasn't been a tradition there before? You know, it's just like anything. You, you, there's going to be kids that just do not like uh, rural Pullman, just like they want to be in a city. And if that's, the, if that's one of their things right away, you know, we, 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 we fix that right away. We start with that. Um, but I'm telling you, there are people and there are young people out there and, you know, at all different levels. There's a reason to go to Connecticut, you know. Uh, but if you're going to get your number on a wall, you're going to have to pass some pretty darn good players to get there. Or if you're going to put a banner up, you're just going to be one of a whole bunch. And that's great and that's cool. And, and there's a lot of kids that are choosing to do that. But there's also players that that want to be the first that that want to go be the footprints and leave footprints behind and for others to you know they 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 can't say that they were the first ones and and um but they can point to you know a time in in our program tradition and history and go that's when it changed when i was there and when we did this and i think there's something to that to be that kind of character and that kind of a uh, competitor that's willing to go out on a limb and take a chance on a program that hasn't done it, but then can reap the rewards and be a part of uh, climbing up that mountain and seeing if we can put a stake in the top of that mountain. Kim Doss, go ahead, Kim. Um, Cammy, we know about your stars, but who is kind of an X factor that really needs to step up for you guys to be successful in the tournament? Well, I mean, I, I really still think our, our we need we need good scoring punch from our five starters. I, I don't think we can survive with, you know, one or two of them just, you know, not scoring. Um, so to me, you know, they've got to be good across the board. They can't just come in and, and bring us great energy. I mean, we need Crystal to – she doesn't have to score 15 or 20 points, but she's she's got to be really solid and, and have – you know, for us. And, and if we could get her close to 10 points a game, I mean, if you can do that. If you can get 10 or 12 points from your starters and obviously you might need more from a couple others, you know, we have a chance to, to compete every single night out. It's, it's the hard part for us still is um, if we have one or two or three starters that just, you know, don't score, it's hard for us to get that off the bench. I mean, I think our bench players and the people that come off the bench uh, they play to their roles. They, they do everything they can. I think some of them have the ability to score more. So we've got to rely on that and trust that and get them in the game and, and rest our starters. But I feel really good about them, you know, producing. I, I think the onus still is a little bit more on our players that have the ball in their hands the most. So I'm not sure I can answer that completely other than to say uh, we, you know, we play those starters so many minutes. We've got to get good scoring from all five of them. Well, um, one thing I noticed when you had the win over Arizona was when Charlize couldn't score, Bella kind of carried you um, in that first half. You know, she kept you guys close. So what do you think of her role? Yeah. What she needs to do? I mean, it's key, it's key for us. I, I think Bella struggled. She had, she had, a, she had a, an amazing three weeks uh, stretch there where she was really scoring and and uh, not just scoring, but good, good post moves, really solid, um, you know, kind of everything we want her to be when she catches in the post and a back to the basket post player. And she just lost her way a little bit and, and tried to do too much and, and and which young players do. And we've really tried to get back to the basics with her and, and get her to a spot where she's a powerful player, goes off two feet versus one um, and, and, 
uses her presence and, and body a little bit better instead of exposing the ball so much. So I think this time's been really good for us to get back to the fundamentals with her, but she's, she needs to be a double, double machine for us every single time she steps on the floor. I mean, she's got a score in double figures and she needs 12 rebounds every single game out. So that's a big ask, but I really think she's, she's prepared to go in and, and make some noise in, in the tournament. Theo Lawson, Spokesman Review. Go ahead, Theo. Was it pretty nice to see your name on the screen uh, really early on in the selection show and not have to sweat it out for for 20 to 30 minutes, kind of like a lot I, of your teams have been this season? I missed it. I missed it. I was like, you know, it's not coming this fast, and everybody screamed around me and, and obviously saw the kook head. So uh, it's really nice to see it, um, you know, just to be in that tournament, to see the excitement of our team and, you know, sit around and watch other programs – jump up and down and, and, and have that moment. And honestly, two years, these last two years, you don't know when it's going to come here and for it to happen so fast and suddenly. And in this kind of year, um, I am just, again, the story is our players and how much they've, you know, put into this and, and sacrificed. And I mean, the ones that have been here two years and three years, and obviously then the ones that walked in and, and helped get us over the hump here. But it's it's really neat to see them uh, celebrate and, and be excited and 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 start to understand the magnitude of of what this means to you know you know us in America. I think that's the interesting thing is the internationals picking up on just how big this thing is here in America. Does it feel any better this year, uh, or, or more more uh, more earned, uh, given all the circumstances of, of the season with COVID and injuries and everything you guys have had to go through just to get to the end here? Yeah, you know, the, the, the season's so long and go back and think about us in September talking to our team and getting them ready and going through all of that and and having so much energy. And then you just get to the end and you're just, you know, you think you're just on fumes because, you know, we were one of the few programs that played everybody. You know, we didn't have very many weeks off. And, and so you were gearing up for two games every week and week after week after week after week after week and others had pauses and stopped and they had their issues but when you get to the end of that grind of of being on every, two times every week against this kind of competition um uh, you know we got exposed a little bit when we lost a, a player and an, an energy person for our team and had to regroup and had to to get ourselves back in in a groove and and honestly earn our way back into the tournament we kind of were there and then lost our footing and, and then to, to kind of recover and, and make our way back into the tournament, man, it is, it is just so big time. And it is such a statement and uh, to our players and again, their, their commitment and um, you know, their resiliency, you know, how much they, they just fought through all of this to get where they are. And I'm really happy that they're going to get to experience it. What's the experience of, of being at the tournament as a player and what do you think the team will feel on Sunday when, when they kind of, come out in the court and they're, they're, they're absorbing all the atmosphere. And I know it's going to be different this year, but what do you kind of remember about that? And, and is it exciting to know that they're going to be able to share that on Sunday? It's so different. I mean, this is going to be so different, you know, and even that like hopping on a plane and, and normally we'd be hopping on a plane to go in this situation to North Carolina state. And you're, you know, we'd be playing South Florida in the, probably an empty gym because they're not, they're coming out just for the NC state game. So just, you know, in women's basketball, you go to the top seeds. And so if you are to win, then all of a sudden you're playing NC State in front of their sellout crowd and, you know, quite an advantage for the higher seed. So I I enjoyed that advantage because we were usually always the higher seed at, when we were at Texas and, and, and going through the tournament. But so this is so unique. The fact that we all go to a neutral site, limited fans, um, very high protocol and almost quarantine bubble can't everybody has their own room you're not you just you don't get to interact you don't get to experience you know san antonio or walk along the river walk i mean there's going to be some limits that you just go that's a shame that the kids don't get to experience some of this but um you know it's part of what we have dealt with all year and we're not going to let the inconvenience of that dampen our excitement and enthusiasm and and again, hope that we can just get ourselves ready to, to compete against a great team and, and um, you know, just take it one game at a time and see if we can find a way to advance and, and get to play another great team. Brenna Green with Cram. Go ahead, Brenna. 
Tammy, I, I asked um, I asked Charlize about this, but uh, I know you know at the beginning of the season, or even probably before the season started, you guys looked around and you said, "Look at the banners in this gym; there are none." Um, just how does it feel looking back on that moment and, and where you are today? Yeah, I don't know that at the start of the year I I mentioned that. You know, I I mentioned it. You know, as we were leading up to it, you, you point that out, I think, when you think you're going to get there. At the start of the year, when you're picked 12th, I don't think any of us thought we would finish 12th in the Pac-12, but, you know, you certainly aren't thinking, yeah, we're going to make the NCAA tournament this year. We're going to leapfrog over six of these teams that we were picked to go behind. And so, but as the season went on, you know, you just, I just think the excitement for us was just seeing this team you know, become a more competitive program. Every game was competitive and we could have lost some close games and we did lose some close games, but we were in every game. And that was just so such a different feeling and did it different ways, played different styles. So to see the maturity of our program and, and obviously some success of our young players and, and then the, just be a part of the chemistry and the work ethic and the commitment and, and, you know, the buy-in within the team and, you know, enjoying all of that and understanding that, you know, Coug women's basketball was starting to become a story a little bit. That was the fun part is just enjoying the ride a little bit of, of, of surprising people. And um, then we went through some ups and downs because then it, all of a sudden we had bullseye on our back and didn't handle that well. But that, that's the beauty of athletics and, and just knowing that you've got to show up and prove yourself every day. And we're a lower seed against South Florida, but, you know, it's a one-game situation and, and you got to go out and try to be the better team. Tammy, right. uh, you, you, guys, um, you guys are one of four teams in our area that's going to the NCAA tournament. We've never sent four teams uh, to the NCAA tournament in the Inland Northwest before. Just what does it mean to you to be a part of that group and, uh, you know, just watching college basketball in this region become bigger and better uh, as the years go on. Yeah, that's that's a great statement. And, uh, you know, we we were just talking um, actually with our athletic director, Pat Chun, and, and just the, the there's a lot of talent. There's I don't think you realize how much talent it is around here until you start noticing that the the success of these programs um you know and some of these programs have been doing it a long time so you know they're they're kudos to them you know they've been proving it and doing it for a long period of time and we're the new kid on the block so uh you know all, all i can say is i hope it it opens doors for us as we continue to you know build our brand you know women's basketball becoming relevant in women's basketball so that we have a chance at some of the great players and the great talent in this specific Pacific Northwest. Um, we certainly want to be competitive with these other programs that are succeeding out in this area. We certainly want to be competitive with within the Pac-12 of the, of the top teams in the Pac-12. So um, again, this where we, we, we feel like we're, we're on the rise where we're, we're, we're you know, climbing that hill that some people are, are way up the hill on us, but um, we don't want to be a one hit wonder. We want to be, we, again, we want to be relevant for years to come. We want to become that program that is, um, their name is called every single year in the NCAA selection. So it's work to be done. Recruiting's big. And, you know, our hope is that this opens the doors to a lot of great players that we can get into our, our program. I'm going to take a couple of final questions from Coach. Please raise your hands if you have any more. We're going to go with Theo Lawson, spokesman review. Go ahead, Theo. Yeah, just one more, uh, one more for me, Cami. Yeah, I, I know that Lubbock and San Antonio aren't, aren't exactly close on the map, but is it pretty special to return back to the state of Texas where, where this whole basketball thing kind of started for you? Well, I love Texas, and um, but I love, I, I really do love uh, a Final Fours that are in San Antonio, and. Um, uh, I wish it could be rotate like every 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 other year in San Antonio. I just I just think you always get great weather. It's it's just a, a, the river walk and all of that is just awesome. Um, and I'm that the next part of that is don't ever have it above you know anywhere in the north. You know I just think it's crazy to to go places where it's snowing that time of year. But 
Um, I think this will be different. So I don't know. I mean, and we can't take them over to the Alamo or we can't do some of those crazy things probably, but um, you know, just knowing that we get to be a part of this, we're going to, we're going to enjoy every, every moment of it. Um, I've loved hearing from fans and alumni and, and kooks from all over the world. Uh, again, I think we want to, we want to make everybody proud that's ever been part of being a Coug. And um, so we're just going to, we're going to, take our little team and we're going to go down to Texas and, and really try to put on a good show and, and try to come out with a win uh, starting on Sunday. Well, coach, congratulations again. Thank you for your time here. We'll talk to you when you get down to Texas and go Cougs. Thanks everybody for uh, asking questions and being part of this. Appreciate it. Go Cougs.